Meditation Conversation, a podcast to support your spiritual revolution. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and today is episode 300. Wow, that is just insane. I can't believe that it's already episode 300. So I'm honored to have my very special guest, Michael Massey joining today. Michael has been a guest many times on the Meditation Conversation. He's my most frequent guest. He's a dear, dear friend. He's been my mentor. He's helped me so much on my spiritual journey, and it is always a joy to have him on and get to share his perspective with you. So this is the type of episode I just love doing with Michael where he talks about what's happening with the energetics on the planet right now and gives predictions about what's to come. We talk about what accessing our old memories has to do with ascension, how your healing journey works from a nonlinear perspective, how obstacles look from the lens of the higher self, and so much more. So we'll get right into that in just a minute, but first, are you tired of restless nights and constant stress? True Vega is here to help. This simple but powerful handheld vagus nerve stimulation therapy only takes two minutes, morning and night, to reclaim your peace of mind. This revolutionary device stimulates the vagus nerve to reduce stress and promote a deep, restful sleep. Your vagus nerve plays a crucial role in regulating various bodily functions, including heart rate, digestion, stress, inflammation, and mood. True Vega delivers gentle energy impulses into the vagus nerve, leading to a wide range of wellness benefits, including reducing stress, increasing focus, and improving mood and sleep. This technology is the most clinically studied and tested vagus nerve therapy available. It's a drug-free and easy way to improve your health. Use code MCPOD for $15 off your order. That's MCPOD for $15 off. Check out TrueVega.com. And now enjoy this episode. Okay. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for being here today for episode 300. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Can they make a movie about this moment? About you and I recording episode 300? 300? Oh, no. That was like Spartan 300. You know. Oh, it's so but, close. Yeah. It's pretty uh, much the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Epics and at Thermopylae. Yeah, right. it's uh-huh. probably a significant. Yeah, exactly. And we're recording on eleven eleven. We are, which is also Veterans Day. Thank you for your service, Michael. Thank you. I did not. I did not give my service, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I was thanking you for thanking me, and then we can do a just a thanks to all the veterans out there. That's um, right. Do you have, yes. Given uh, their service. Given their service. Uh, yes. Thank you, veterans. Okay. Well, 1111 is not just Veterans Day. That is an important part of the day, but it's also a gateway. And so let's talk a little bit just about what are you picking up? This is one of my favorite things is... What's going on in Michael's world? What are you picking up? And especially as we're here at the end of the year, but we know that these repeating numbers always have significance. And so energetically, how are things looking out there? Pretty spectacular. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I recently arrived back here in Sedona, which has been a wonderful little re-entry. Uh, uh, back here to Sedona, and it's been it's been a, a pretty amazing year to date in terms of the energetics and the various dip- and the portals that we've gone through, aside from the, the uh, equinoxes and the solstice, but also the one ones, two twos, three threes, and here we are at eleven eleven. 
and and now the what is really it's amazing how year over year what this continued amplification and how one each cycle that we go through is laying a foundation for the, the, the next cycle is building on it and now for me personally what i this has been a, a really a year of integration of this kind of new what we call the new uh, trinity based operating system or something like that that got layered in and back in last year in 2022 and so to an extent what i've experienced over the course of this year is a fulfillment of what i promises so called um that were have been a long time in coming and personally, this has been manifest most significantly in terms of uh, stability within my own energy field, such that I, it's very difficult for me to get uh, triggered, nearly impossible, or to get knocked off of whatever vibration I happen to choose to be on. And that itself is something that I've been longing for and asking for for over a decade is like oh when can i just be me and and just rock that vibration and not constantly being pushed to one side or the other or triggered or knocked down or any of that and so that's this has been a huge huge blessing and it's been a series of stages and as now, this is how I've been going through it personally, but I've also been witnessing the progression of where um, various people within my circle and taking field reports of what's happening in and out there. And it's been, it's been an, an, an intense, but a, a exciting progression as we're moving uh, forward on this ascension track. Mm. That's a huge gift. That's awesome. How it, long has that been going on? I think I, I crossed over a threshold right around the birthday time time frame was say it was May into June. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that something happened at that that point where where my own consciousness moved over past the threshold where it couldn't actually entertain any negative self thoughts anymore. I could still have one, but I can't dwell on it. They just pat they just cycle right mm -hmm. out. That's and, what we talked about the last time that we were, that we did a podcast, that live stream. Yeah, we the, did yeah. We talk about this before. Mm -hmm. And then this has progressed even further in terms of stability. And, and as the thing is, when we, we talked about this for the very first episode we ever did, episode 33, we even talked about this thing called state dependent memory. Mm-hmm. And that when we're at, depending on what our emotional state and what frequency we happen to be on, that's going to actually change our, the memories that we're going to have that are going to be nearest to us. Mm -hmm. So that when we're feeling good, we tend to have a memory access that life is good. And then we remember, we just tend to remember life is rosy, right? But then when we're down in the dumps, we tend to look and we're in closer proximity to all those memories of, of life sucking. And mm -hmm. this is that thing, that principle of state dependent memory. And so this is a very, this is what's really been exciting and cool as we, as I'm moving forward through my progress and then witnessing others making their own progress in that same regard, how we, re it is an, en an enlightening, if you will, of one's consciousness as our, the memory access gets more and more enhanced. And so it's. Now, within the last, with the 1010 gateway, uh, what I experienced and around that, and I was so fortunate to be able to catch the ring of fire eclipse. I was out in the middle of the Nevada desert and that, that actually triggered a, a new enhanced memory access as well, such that I have almost it's like a complete sensory experience of my memories of, from my whole life so when i'm recalling a memory i mean i know exactly how it felt the, the smells the tastes the 
my whole life is now like it's, it's opened up as like this archive that I can revisit in a meditation. And it's just like I'm there. Mm. Wow. I've had glimpses of that myself and it's fascinating. And I feel like more and more memories coming back, yeah. even what, but most of them are like, well, this is a weird one to remember. Like nothing significant, just being in a third grade classroom and remembering the cement walls and, you know, how they're painted like such thick white paint and, yeah. you know, how there's yeah. the, the thin red rug that we would sit on for group reading time. and But just things that it's surely there are more better memories. <laughs> I don't want to rate them, but I'm like, it just seems so just remembering these details as though I'm back there, which is interesting, but it just doesn't seem very relevant, I suppose, is what I'm saying. But I've got I've that has happened more and more where I'm like, yeah, OK, there's that file. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I the it it may not. It may be. The memories that coming back are important, or it may be more that there's the enhancement of the memory access is really what's important, more important necessarily than the specific memories. But even as you were just describing that classroom, right? I mean, I went back. I remember, I remember the cracks in the wood of the wooden seats that we used to have. I don't know if they still. <laughs> <laughs> and you're about to squirm with your butt because after a while, you're it's like it. Yeah. You know, pressure points on your butt bone. You remember that? Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, yeah, and the smell of the paste. I remember oh, the, yeah. that. And then, the like, the sound when everybody's taking a test and you just hear a little like, quiet rustle of uh, paper and a uh -huh. you know, tapping of a pencil and all of that. And so there you're just talking about something and I'm fluttered with all these visceral sensations. And the more, the most significant thing for me is that it's not just the sensory parts, but it's the feeling from the core, the feeling of what it felt like mm -hmm. to be six or seven years old. And yeah, sitting in class, going to the beach, or trick treating, or whatever it happened to be. And I think though that this what's exciting, and this is where where I've been really experiencing as I've come back into this post eclipse now and coming back into Sedona. And there's, this is a, what a, a place that's very familiar to me, but I'm experiencing it again, almost like from the first time, uh, because everything I feel, everything's very visceral and I'm experiencing it like I did when I was a kid. And these memories helped me to, when you remember how things really felt as a child and because as a child we're so alive mm -hmm. and then into our adulthood we just can dim down and it's that feeling of just being alive yeah yeah alert awake and alive it's fantastic yeah. I love that. It makes me just think about the view of life in general, because I remember growing up and there's the rhythm of the school year and the holidays and you start to get used to that because you're it's you're new to it for a long time. And then it's eventually you start to get to know, oh, summer's coming. And that means it's a long time of freedom and oh, school year's coming. And now we find our teacher, all the you know, all the rhythms of all of that. And then you get to college, if you go to college, and there's a rhythm there, too, that kind of mimics what you're used to. I remember I, there was some point when I just kept, I just was so forward looking. that It was like, okay, now I got to the point where I just have to get through school. And th then the real stuff starts. And for a while, it was like, get through high school, and then college is the real stuff. And then you're in college. And it's get through college and then the real stuff starts. And yeah. but then there was just this drop off almost of I'm in it now and 
just, this is what I just do. I just do this forever now until I retire. And it was, there's a, you talk about that aliveness of being a child. And it does feel like we lose some of that because we keep thinking there keeps there there comes a point, or at least there was in my life, where it was like, oh, that's when it starts. Oh, it will start at some point when this happens or this happens. And then before you know it, you're a grown up and it's just it's it just it, you know, it's just this <laughs> it can take the look of, okay, we just do this indefinitely. Just keep doing this and this and this. And just this and repetition. The cats, the, the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Yeah, exactly. The, blue, the man in the man. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we do, we definitely do lose something. And I'm just equating that when you're talking about like the aliveness of being a child and everything's new, you're still figuring it out. And I know there's a lot of programming that goes in that makes it so that we start to accept and think that's what life is, this continuous, repetitive, mundane, we do this day after day after day and do the same thing. And that's what life is. And so I wonder how much those like starting to access, like if other people listening have are relating to, yeah, I feel like I have access to more memories maybe, or something like that, where it's, what is that opening us up to as well? Memories of a different patterning than what we have grown into in our lives. Yeah. And I'll make a little prediction here that the next, already, I think we have a is it we say is it just getting older or is there something going on or is it a sign of the times or what is it but what is the deal with time these days right yeah yeah and everybody can, we can all relate to this you're like wait a sec what is it going? he's like it's zip by it's whatever it's, it's what it's stretching it's shrinking it's speeding up it's slowing it's, down it's, it's, yeah it's right and Yesterday can feel like a uh, hundred years ago and then whatever a decade ago can feel like just yesterday. It, it's really weird. Yeah. And of course, it's because one of the big reasons is just simply that time isn't what we really think it is and it's not linear, right? We just accept that and we go, oh, wow. Okay, so there are things that are happening with time and so my prediction is get ready folks because you know over the next few months and then the next few years and then about the next decade is gonna radically alter our view of time oh and, really yeah yeah on yeah. the whole and, yeah and time is again is, is more malleable than, than people think and Maybe all this memory access stuff is part of an overall shift in the time field, or at least it's a component of it. And as we think, as we basically are going through these energetic upgrades, but just imagine as you're basically doing all your work, you do clearing stuff, but it actually opens up this greater enhanced ability to travel within your consciousness through every experience that we've had in life. What a great present. What essentially is our consciousness isn't bound by time. So if I can move my consciousness to another point along my lifetime, then I can just relive fully, viscerally relive that experience. Mm. What a gift that would be. Yeah. That's very mind bendy. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I love that we're talking about time feeling like it's going fast and we're here we are at episode 300 and like i said every time we do that i remember so distinctly when we did 200 and it literally we even joked that well i guess i'll see you in a couple of weeks for recording episode 300 because it's going so we were talking about how it's going so fast yeah. and here we are and it's like yep how in the world is it time for this already <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. How do you see 
So taking that into account, and I love that like prediction of what how this could play out in a bigger like our bigger perception of life. What do you see for the rest of 2023? Okay, so let's see. The early indicators of the portals is this is a it's a something's something's coming in. I'll just call it like a Christmas diamond. I'm just going to call it for that. So there's a Christmas diamond grid kind of thing. And, and so I see this is actually going to be uh, coming in the online more in a big way. I am expecting that there's probably going to be a, let's say a, a sprinkling of portals opening up all over the place and people experiencing this, that the, the this particular, like the Christmas diamond actually exudes a light. Just all you have to do is really think about the speaking of the memory access here is if you can imagine the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. Okay. And, and how that felt. It's great if this is a memory of a child because it's Christmas feels awesome as a kid. Okay. Yeah. Now, now imagine just being able to kind of capture a bottle that feeling, okay, and then put it into a, this like diamond power source, and then radiate that as light, and it just has that quality. That's what it feels like. And so, this is what I, what I'm detecting or picking up and experiencing inbound in a really profound way. Now, how that shows up and what it ends up looking like, your guess is as good as mine. But I just know the quality of the energetics that is arriving here for this Christmas season. Mm, wow. It's, it's pretty exquisite. Yeah. So do you see that being something that people experience? Like I know you said you don't know how that shows up, but is it something that you feel like will come in and integrate into this experience? Or do you see it more as like, here's your Christmas treat. And then things kind of go back. No. So what I'm experienced, what I, this is actually a good segue to, um, to maybe putting a few things together that we've talked about over the years. And I, and I'm going to use myself as an analog here. And we're going to talk about this like st a string of pearls, if you will. So let's say a few years back, so about three years back, I had in injured my knee again. I was out in Seattle. I was out at this, in the woods at this lake. And I had a pr profound healing experience where I was pretty hobbled, but I had a moment, what I call radical acceptance, right? Where I just accepted that maybe this is just my fate in life. And, but that opened up and I had this really ma amazing experience and this whole new blueprint. I experienced this healing thing and in that moment, it healed up my knee and I was able to walk fine. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. in the subsequent months and the years that followed, and now I did have downtime where I had troubles with my knee, but I came back out of that. And then more recently this year, there's been a few, and it's really taken an uptick for me since coming back here into Sedona. And I can, and I'm, being blessed now with an additional physical healing the interesting thing is that as it's coming in i can connect the thread there's the like the thread back to that previous moment and i want us to think about this because it's particularly when it comes to healing and we might pray or ask for a complete and total healing now let's say what happens is we do get a healing coming to experience come in but it may not be a total total healing but this is the importance of just being patient and then being grateful for what what has happened and understand that's not the end of the story and it's not the end of the string of pearls and so that when we ask for something that the universe that god is going to deliver that but it may be coming in, it would come in like that string of pearls. And that for us to have, this is the act of faith and understanding 
that not to worry because the blessings will flow and they will continue to flow and they will continue until our joy is complete. And until our joy is complete, the string of pearls will not cease. Now, now we've been talking about like the nonlinearity of time, right? And we're using this example also of a string of pearls, which of course is linear, right? Mm -hmm. But the truth of things is not quite so linear. And this is just another kind of thing, a, a model that I want to, for people to understand about the blessings of God when we look at this string of pearls. But the, but this whole thing about like the blessing that I'm receiving now is actually building on a blessing that I received before. So it's not really a discrete separate pearl down the line, so to speak. But it's something that's built at the next level of it. So if we look at pearls, but the pearls are actually nested like the rich, the, the dolls, mm. right? And this is, gets into our spherical consciousness. So we understand that the blessings from above are like string pearls, but it's actually that, that all of those different pearls are the layers of the full onion. And of course, not until we're whole and complete with all of our layers beautiful and intact, that's when our joy is truly complete. It can be no other way. Mm. And so that's a message of hope and faith and love to everyone that it is the, that this process of life and everything that we're going through is its ultimate destiny is to come into that completion of joy. hundred mm. percent. That's beautiful. I love that. Like I hadn't really thought about that nesting. It's very quantum that, okay, this experience is healing, that there is that thread that draws it back to that had to have been like three and a half years ago, I guess, that you had that because we did a great podcast about that one, the radical acceptance and how that connects this experience that you're having now back with that but it's from a time perspective it's like very similar very like connected in terms of the content and the mechanism but there's a time component and there's a there's the difference between who you are now and who you were then and the different upgrades that you've been through and the lessons that have been learned in the just the difference in your growth in that length of time as well. So different things are open to you now that weren't yet open, that were still maybe dormant or yeah. inaccessible at that time. It's really interesting to think about. Again, mind bendy. <laughs> yeah, all of this is. Yeah. And we've all probably had the experience where we, we saw a movie once upon a time in our life and then some number of years goes by and we watch it again and we're like, holy cow. Oh my God, the whole circus of the universe are in this movie and I saw it 10 years ago and apparently it went right over my head. Right. Right? Yeah. And you're like, wow, it was right there. Yeah. Yeah, or and you can love the movie or the book or whatever so much at that time and then read or watch it again. And it's like, how could I even have understood this back then? Because it is, this is completely new and it is mind blowing how, like you say, the secrets that are in here or whatever. And it's like, how did I even enjoy this? I can't imagine I could even understand it with, you know? <laughs> I can hardly understand it now. <laughs> I was such a poser back then. <laughs> right. But it just, that's a great example of how layered things are too, where it's like, you know, we've got this with the Bible, where there is a certain level that almost anybody is going to be able to understand on the surface of the stories of the Bible, because they're, that's the very literal part where it's, if it says this, it means this. And then you can go a little bit deeper and then it's more of the metaphor that's in it where it's like, okay, we're not actually talking about a lion in this. That's just a symbol. What does that symbolize? And then there's 
there are people who actually take the Bible or take the works of Shakespeare also, and they're mathematically decoding where yeah. it's based on rows and columns and punctu even taking punctuation into it, taking punctuation out of it. And how does that change it? Applying it to mathematics, applying it to like the pyramids in Egypt. Like how does the structure of this relate to the pyramids in, in Egypt? It's like, the, and those are just three examples of the le levels of coding and layers that are within those texts. So yeah. it's, it's there, it's in a lot of this stuff, it's, there's something for everybody. Oh, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And ultimately, and in general, that's one of the things I think Pixar was so po popular so many years and because yeah. they, they knew how to tell a story that it, and in such a way yes. that it could hit multiple different audiences and right. could be incredibly deep and then totally engaging for a four-year-old. That's what you need to do. That's real. That's really special. That's really talent. And yeah, 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 yeah. That. That's amazing. Wow. Well, is there anything else that's screaming out at you that you want to share while we're here? Just this morning, I'm just reflecting. It's the eleven and eleven. I'm got like super columns blowing out my crown today. I was actually just looking at that. I just saw, I was looking at not much my life, but life in general. It's just like all that's inbound right now is blessings. And so this is what I was saying. And I'm like, even if you're, look, if you think that you're cursed, things just aren't going or are just going wrong. But that's because you're just going the wrong way. So they're supposed to go wrong. The worst case scenario would be things for you to go right if you're happening to be going the wrong way. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that just struck me as being super obvious. And I was like, oh, no. So when things are going wrong, that's actually, that's a blessing. If it's because you want them to go wrong if it's the wrong thing. And I go, oh, we just, just line with the blessings and, and have a little patience, make some adjustments, whatever. But just know that, hey, it's a string of blessings here. And if we just work, maybe we got to work our orientation out a bit. And yeah, then always stuff with sales and let's, let's ride that current. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So it's like, oh, you want like your, maybe your human ego wants to go to the right, but your higher self knows that's not going to take you where you actually came here to go. Bigger picture, your soul is wanting to have a different experience that is not going to happen if you go right. So yeah. we're going to block that. Yeah. And the way that we're going to block that is that's not going to work. You can yeah. keep pushing it and, it, and you're just going to keep blocked because no, that's not for you. That's not for you. And just looking at it that way is so powerful to be like, oh, okay. It's almost like I have this picture in my head of like my having a toddler and they really want to go where somebody is mopping, you know, and they're trying to get through that doorway. And you're actually literally as a parent, like standing in front of them and matching their steps. Oh, they're going to their right. So I'm stepping to my left so that they're blocked. You're blocked. You're blocked. You're blocked. You know, it, and it's gentle in that way. Well, you can't have what you want, but you're also not going to go and slip and fall your, on your head because it's wet out there and it's not safe. And it's just like, maybe your higher self is dancing with you right now, right now. Like, nope, nope, nope. You still can't. You still. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, and that's a, a perfectly good reason why something might be so-called delayed we think it's delayed but because we're not ready to swim in those waters yet mm -hmm. and we need to get stronger or whatever you know mm -hmm. we need to grow up we need to get grow up so we're above 54 inches or whatever it is <laughs> right like we're on a water slide <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just there for our safety or protection and that's fine yeah Oh, that's beautiful. I'm sure that I'm sure that's welcome 
news for a lot of people because it is it's a tumultuous time as we're recording this it's beautiful to hear you talk about all the blessings that are rushing in right now and the the columns of light that you're experiencing out of your crown and again that's against a backdrop of a really difficult time on our planet at this time because we're not it's not a peaceful time and there's a lot of uncertainty for a lot of people so it's wonderful to bring that perspective into things yeah. and to feel that actually there are a lot of blessings around. Yes, yes. And it does as well to focus on them. And the other thing is it's okay to. And it's okay to focus in on the blessings as you're exper- each of us is experiencing it while being aware that there are others that around the world that they're having a different experience, mm-hmm. but it's, it, but it doesn't, it, it, unless we can consider the affairs of the world in so far as it brings us to a heart of compassion and, and yet it is, it doesn't serve anyone for us to deny ourselves, our own ability to thrive simply because others are in suffering. And I know that's hard for those that are empathic. It's difficult, but here's your permission slip. Yeah. 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 I thank you for that. And I think that too, especially it's a great point about the empaths because have giving ourselves that permission, like you say, to focus on blessings. It's like, what does that not only do to us? But because we are quantum beings and everything that we are connected to in the quantum, literally, we affect it. So if we're able to affect ourselves with the feelings of blessings, with the knowing and the embodiment of blessing, it's literally ripples out and it by default helps the whole. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, Karen. What a beautiful conversation. Well, congratulations again for the 300 episodes of the Meditation Conversation. Woohoo! Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And another 300 to come, if that's... Unless my higher self starts... It says... Dancing. Yeah. (laughs) It's like (laughs) blocked. Blocked. (laughs) (laughs) wonderful thank you so much michael thanks for being here thank you care and thank you all blessings to you